Do I feel like, it helped me think about my writing. I, I was just sitting there, I was thinking, oh, my subject is, I have two subjects in my writing. One is my relationship to the land, actually, it's one of my main subjects. And my other subject, which I had already articulated to myself, is joy. My subjects are joy and my relationship to the land. And I was sitting back and I was thinking, oh, they're the same thing. The same thing. Yeah. Anyway, grateful to be here. Um, this is a poem called Burial, and <laughs> I'd like to ask this question before I read this poem. Um, has anyone ever done anything with their placenta? Shout it out. It's in my freezer. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. Two. Ah, planted a tree on it. Okay. Um, sometimes I ask that question and people look at me funny. But <laughs> this is the crowd, the right crowd. <laughs> Burial. You're right, you're right, the fertilizer's good. It wasn't a gang of dullards came up with chucking a fish in the planting hole, or some midwife got lucky with the placenta. Oh, I'll plant a tree here. <laughs> and a sudden flush of quince and jam enough for months. Yes, the magic dust our bodies become cast spells on the roots about which someone else could tell you the chemical properties, but it's just magic to me. Which is why a couple springs ago, when first putting in my two bare root plum trees out back, I took the jar which has become my father's house, and lonely for him and hoping to coax him back from my mother as much as me, I poured some of them into the planting holes, and he dove in, glad for the robust air, saddling a slight gust into my nose and mouth, chuckling as I coughed, but mostly he disappeared into the minor yawns in the earth, into which I placed the trees, splaying wide their roots, casting the gray dust of my old man evenly throughout the hole, replacing then the clods of dense Indiana soil until the roots and my father were buried, watering it all in with one hand while holding the tree with the other straight as the flag to the nation of simple joy of which my father is now a naturalized citizen. Waving the flag from his subterranean lair, the roots curled around him like shawls or jungle gyms, like hookahs or the arms of ancestors before breaststroking into the xylem, riding the elevator up to the cambium and into the leaves where, when you put your ear close enough, you can hear him whisper, good morning. Where, if you close your eyes and push your face, you can feel his stubbly jowls, and good Lord, this year he was giddy at the first real fruit set and nestled into the 30 or 40 plums of the two trees peering out from the sweet meat with his hands pressed against the purple skin like cathedral glass. And imagine his joy as the sun wizarded forth those abundant sugars and I plodded barefoot and prayerful at the first ripe plum swell and blush, almost weepy, conjuring some surely ponderous verse to convey this bottomless grace, you know, oh bother, oh bother kind of stuff. Hundreds of hot air balloons filling the sky in my chest replacing his intubated body, listing like a boat keel side up, replacing the steady stream of water from the one eye, which his brother wiped before removing the tube, keeping his hand on the forehead until the last wind in his body wandered off while my brother wailed like an animal. And my mother said, weeping, <clears throat> it's okay, it's okay, you can go, honey and all of which my father guffawed by kicking from the first bite buckets of juice down my chin, staining one of my two button-down shirts, the salmon-colored silk one, hollering, there's more of that, <laughs> almost dancing now in the plum, in the tree, the way he did as a person, bent over and biting his lip and chucking the one hip out and then the other with his elbows cocked and fists loosely made and eyes closed and mouth made trumpet when he knew he could make you happy just by being a little silly and sweet. Thank you very much.